What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Get Paid for Your Pad, episode 559. And I am super excited about this episode. My guest is Jeff Brown. He's been on the podcast before. Uh, he is the founder of IntelliHost. And today we are going to go through our entire Airbnb booking funnel. Uh, and we're going to talk about how to optimize and how to analyze and optimize it. Uh, so super excited for this episode. We're going to go into detail here. So grab your notebook. Uh, Make sure you uh, pay attention because, uh, yeah, we're going to cover a lot. So, Jeff, welcome to the show. Welcome back. Thanks. I'm uh, happy to be back. Yeah, and for the for those who uh, uh, have been listening for a while, Jeff was on episode 480 uh, where we talked about uh, how to stand out on Airbnb with extremely themed units. Um, Jeff has some uh, some pretty awesome uh, units under, under his brand, Loma Homes. Um, I remember some pirates and castles and beautiful drawings <laughs> on the walls and uh yeah really uh really cool units thanks um but today we are uh we are putting on our our nerd hats and we are going to dive into the numbers and metrics and an analysis uh, so it's going to be a lot of fun this is a topic that uh, i personally enjoy very very much so uh jeff let's uh let's start with um the Airbnb booking funnel and how we can break down the funnel and understand, you know, what is the customer journey of a person looking for looking to book an Airbnb and uh, and what are the factors that determine that we can use to optimize those those parts? Yeah, totally. Um, so I think it's helpful to understand that, first of all, uh, and this is coming straight from Airbnb, they say that 90 percent of all traffic on Airbnb comes from direct traffic. So what that means is when people go to Air, when they get, when they go to book an Airbnb, they do not go to Google and search what they're looking for. They go straight to their URL and they type in Airbnb.com. That most likely auto fills for them. They hit enter and that's how they start their process. So um, the reason I bring that up is because there's a lot of effort um, right now. I see a lot of people trying to optimize their listings with keywords, and keywords is great for Google but it's not great for Airbnb. So I think it's important to mention that um, if you're spending a lot of time and effort on keywords, um, I would focus your attention on in other areas. I think we haven't seen any data really to, to suggest that keywords help your ranking on, it, on Airbnb. So we'll break that down, but I think that's worth mentioning. So you'll notice that um, when you go to Airbnb, uh, there's a search bar, right? And you search your location and you can search how many guests you have and you can search your dates. And those are filters that Airbnb has for people to really just appear in search. And so that first uh, search that, that people make um, creates a list of results. And everyone that appeared on that list of results just got what's called an impression. An impression is whether you appeared on page one or page 100, that is an impression that is received. And if that is, it's the top of the booking funnel and you really wanna maximize that top of the booking funnel um, so that you can improve your chances of getting booked later, right? And the way you improve impressions is just by appearing more filters. So whether it's number of guests or having more available nights, um, if, you, you know, if you're booking or if you're blocking a lot of nights, then you try to open up as much of those as possible. Um, also, you know, key amenities, like people are searching for pools and hot tubs and uh, bedroom size, right? So anything you can do to appear in more filters is going to help you into your impressions. Um, so after step one, um, it's you want to appear on first page. Now I see a lot of people kind of fretting about whether they're rank two or they're rank ten or they're rank four. What really matters is getting on page one, because ninety percent of people don't leave page one. And the reality is you're going to get the same number of eyeballs whether you're result two or result seven. Um, they're going to see you either way. Um, and so understanding that second step of uh, first page is, is all about Airbnb's algorithm. And it's the toughest step to drive because Airbnb controls it. And so we know there's a few things that Airbnb uh, does to optimize or to, to, to rank people. Um, but the reality is we don't know all of what they do and so there's a few things that we know is price is is heavily um uh heavily drives your your in page your first page impressions um we know that uh, your your uh, review quality uh helps we know that your age of listing 
helps. Um, and those are just a few things that can help you rank better on uh, first page. Uh, but like mm -hmm. I said, you know, people seem to focus just on rank. Um, but we think that rank is actually driven mostly by things like click rate and conversion rate. And, and if you think about that, um, Airbnb wants to show you the most relevant listings. So what metrics do they have to, to, to determine if something's relevant? Well, it's probably things like click rate and conversion rate because the, the guest is telling Airbnb which ones are most relevant through, that, through those metrics. Yeah. So if you really focus on the bottom of the funnel, what you end up doing is actually helping yourself on the top of the funnel with, with search. And yeah. the bottom of the funnel is number one, clicks, so click rate, meaning you, let's say you, you appear on that first page like you, you, know, you want to, how, what percentage are, of the time are people clicking on your listing after appearing on first page? That's click rate. And the main drivers of that are your cover photo. So how good is your cover photo? Does it really draw people in? Um, number two, um, you know, just think about anything that people can see on that first page. It's things like, are you a super host or not? Um, how many reviews do you have and how good are those reviews? Uh, what is your title? Um, how many how many beds do you have? So there's, like I said, there's only like seven or eight things that people can even see on that first page that would drive uh, that click rate. And so if you're suffering in click rate, that's really where you'd focus your efforts and time on to, to really get people to click on you. So that's yeah. step three is, is, is getting clicked. Um, and then finally, step four is really just that final step of conversion. So step four is, okay, now they've opened up your detail page. Um, so what are they gonna do? What, what, what's going to convince them to now book? And those are things like, um, this is where they start to open up all of your photos. They look at your, you know, your photo order might matter here. Um, your description, your cleaning fees, um, your cancellation policy, uh, whether how quickly you respond to hosts, and the top, the most recent six reviews that you've had, people can now read those. And so those are the things that are going to get people to actually, you know, to convince them to book. And um, and that's and that's step four. So like I said, if you if you're really good at step three and four, you're telling Airbnb that you are relevant. And I think that's the best way to increase your ranking is to actually, it's and counterintuitively, you focus on the, the the bottom of the funnel. Yeah, that's a <clears throat> that's a really good way to break it down. And uh, just want to comment on, on kind of summarize and kind of comment on the steps. So number one is the impressions, right? It's it's like um, it's the filters, and people can select a lot of different filters, right? Like how many mm -hmm. bedrooms? Like does it have a pool? Like there's so many different things that people can go for um but obviously like you know instant book this is, is a big one a lot of people oh. look for instant book listings um and then you know minimum night stay is a big one too right if you have like a four night minimum stay like you're not going to show up in a lot of searches because you know the average stay is like two and a half days or something like that so <clears throat> but one thing i wanted to uh to mention is uh uh one of our one of our uh, mastermind members uh shout out to nathan um, he shared that uh, he he looked at the entire list of Airbnb amenities um, that are on the website, and he uh, he reserved uh, I think it was two hundred and fifty bucks or so, and then he set himself a challenge of like okay with this two hundred and fifty bucks like what can I buy so that I can tick off more of these amenity boxes right, mm. and he ended up uh, increasing uh, the number of views on his listings quite a bit. Uh, yeah. just with that small investment, just little things like a toaster or something or like, you know, because yep. uh, there's so much stuff on there. Right. So that's Absolutely. just a little, little trick for, for people to uh, potentially do. And, um, and then the, the first page impressions, um, no, we talked about the impressions. So that's, that's, that's the top of the funnel is impressions. Then it's first base impressions. And I wanted to point out, like, I think, you know, in, in Google, it actually does matter if you're on, on the top of the page or the bottom of the page. And that's because people, people are just looking for one specific answer, right? So they'll, they'll Google something and then they'll typically click on the first, you know, the first mm -hmm. or the second link, uh, they'll get their answer and then that's it. But for Airbnb users, like we're, we want to check out a number of listings. We don't want to just go straight to the first one and just book it. Right. We want right. to have some options. So, so that's, I think that's why that's the main difference between, you know, the Airbnb search process and, and the Google search process is, um, yeah, if you're if you're on the first page and but you're not on the top, like you probably will be seen still like people Absolutely. will check you out. Right. 
Um, so that's a good good uh, thing to keep in mind. Um, and then <clears throat> and then you know we uh, the the first the first uh, uh, st step is like the clicks, right? How do we get people to click? Um, one question one question for you. You mentioned cover photo. Um, mm -hmm. Now, what I I book pretty a lot of Airbnbs myself. I'm actually uh, I'm actually about to book a, an Airbnb in Bogota, Colombia, uh, as I'm nice. planning to travel there for a couple of days. And cool. uh, what I always do is I not only do I look at the first photo in the search results, but you know how you can flick through a couple photos on there in the search results, so you don't mm. have, actually have to get into the listing. Um, there's a little arrow in the picture. You can, you can actually yeah. scroll through the entire portfolio, but I usually scroll through like the first couple at least mm -hmm. like the first, you know, maybe like three or four or something just to kind of get an idea of like what the listing looks like. So I guess those, um, you know, it's something I always recommend is like, don't just focus on your first, the featured image. Also think about like, you know, what, what, what's photo two, what's photo three. Yeah. And does, does photo two and three and four and five, does it add any value? Um, cause sometimes hosts will put the first five pictures. They're like all of the living room and it's like, <laughs> And then you start scrolling through yeah. and you're just seeing the same thing and then you just get distracted and then you're just, all right, let me just go to the next listing, you know? So, yeah. Um, yeah. So, uh, so just to summarize like impressions, then first base impressions, clicks, and, and then obviously bookings, right? Those are the, yeah. those are the four things that we want to optimize, um, you know, to, to really like maximize the amount of bookings that we're, that we're getting. So then the next question is, you know, we, we kind of went through like, what are the different factors involved? Um, now w there's, there's a Airbnb provides some data, right? It's called Airbnb insights, right? And, uh, you can, I'm sure everybody who's listening has, has seen that, uh, it's right on the, in the top of the menu bars, you know, we have, uh, insights and then, uh, there's a bunch of stuff on there. But what we want to look at uh, is uh, the tab conversion, right? There's a number yep. of metrics in there. And <clears throat> what you're going to see on this page is dependent, is dependent on whether you have activated uh, the professional host tools. That's right. Yeah, so um, the, by default, um, all Airbnb users uh, see a slightly different view than we're going to go through today. Um, it's a little bit more limited. I think all they show is clicks. Um, so I think uh, if you're looking to um, you know, just see clicks and, and see that there, you can you can you can do that. But I recommend that people go up to the account up in the top right, and then once you select on account, you can actually um, click on professional hosting tools, and then when you open that up, um, it it enables a deeper dive dashboard, and that's the insights dashboard that you're talking about. And so once you click on that, you can go. You can go much deeper into some of the metrics we just talked about, meaning first page impressions, clicks, uh, and and overall conversion rate. So, uh, should we go dive yeah, into that one, a little one bit? One question, sorry, sorry, one question on that, like, because um, <clears throat> you know, it says it says on the professional host tool page, it says if you uh, get professional tools if you manage several properties on Airbnb. So, for people with one listing, can they still activate that? Yeah. They can. Um, it doesn't matter if you have one okay. listing or a hundred. You can you can enable that for sure. Interesting. Okay. Um, awesome. So so yeah. So what do you think are because there's a lot of once you turn it on like there's a lot of data there. There's like overall conversion rate. There's like first page search impression rate. There's average search to listing conversion. And I can totally imagine that, especially if you're not a numbers person, if you look at this page, you're probably gonna just get confused. What, what's useful <laughs> for people to look at on this in, in, on this insight page? Yeah, there's a couple of things. Um, you know, there's besides conversion, you can also look at average nightly rate uh, and things like that. Uh, one of the one of the things you can see in there as well is there's a little drop down for comparing to your to to yourself over a time period, but then you can select the drop down to, s to select similar listings, and in similar listings you can see. Uh, Airbnb doesn't tell us what the similar listings are, but they do tell us that there's a number of listings that are similar to ours, and they tell you what the metrics are for them, for those. So you can kind of get a benchmark a little bit. Um, so what you can see there is um, it's a little tricky because um, Airbnb is is surfacing this data in this dashboard by um, what we call a trip date. So let's say I'm looking at yesterday's data. Um, what what we're actually looking at is how many if we're looking at, let's say, March 25th, 
um, we're looking at how many page views, for example, that trip date or that check-in date of March 25th got before that date. We're not actually looking at how many total views we got on March 25th. So it's a little bit, it's a little, it's, you have to understand that when you're looking at the data um, because really what that what that's helpful for is looking at future dates. And if you search for future dates in there, you can see how many views you've got for a, for a future day and you can compare that to your competition. So that's, it is helpful for that if that's what you want to use it for. So how would we use that to optimize our funnel? What parts of the funnel can we optimize with that data? Um, it's tricky to, to with, with the data in its current raw form, it's very difficult to optimize because if you make a change on your listing, um, it's, you'll see the impact on all future trip dates. And so analyzing the impact of that, it becomes very difficult because then you have to, you have to pull all of your dates today and then you have to pull all again tomorrow and compare the difference and see how it's trending over time. Um, and that's very, obviously that's very, unless you're a developer, that's going to be very challenging. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's kind of the challenge with the, with the Airbnb insights, right? It's like, it's kind of fun to look at these numbers. Um, but it's, it's very, it's very difficult to figure out how we can actually use this data to, to make, yeah, to, to analyze our funnel and to improve it. Right. Um, right. and that, you know, that brings us to your the new tool that you that you launched right in telehost um <clears throat> and we you, sh you showed me a demo a couple of days ago and i was like wow this is this is pretty awesome uh i i see a lot of new tools and uh this is definitely one that really stood out which is why i invited you to come on the podcast here so awesome. um you know what why don't we why don't you tell us a little bit about what intellihost does and what kind of data IntelliHost provides and how we can use that data to optimize our funnel. Yeah, yeah, I'd, I'd love to do that. I mean, IntelliHost was born out of um, running our own our own vacation rentals. Like you mentioned, we do our own um, themed rentals in Orlando and Destin. And when we realized that the date format or the, the, the data that was coming out of Airbnb was not what we thought it was, um, and that we had to do a lot of manual transformation in order to make it useful, um, we built a tool internally that helped us do that um, and helped us actually optimize those four steps of the of the booking funnel. Um, and we've been using that for like the last year and it's been massively helpful in understanding what impact our changes, our optimizations are having on the listing and specifically on each of the four steps individually so that we can know how things are going. So. And what we did is um, we broke out each of the four steps uh, of the of the search funnel uh, on IntelliHost, and then we benchmark each of those four steps against competition, so that we know which one we need to focus on. And that's really what optimization is all about: is understanding why. Why am I not getting bookings? And I've heard that a million times, especially um, during the last down season. People were pretty scared. And, uh, if, you know, coming off of uh, post pandemic and you hear all the Airbnb bust and all those, these things going around and people are like, why am I not getting bookings? And we answer that. Um, we can break it down to those, those four steps and say, okay, um, looks like your top of funnel is doing great or you're getting ranked really well, but maybe your click rate is really suffering. And um, that really helps you kind of know what levers to pull to start uh, fixing those things. So, um, yeah, that's really the, the vision behind IntelliHost. And, and then we also... Um, provide some A-B testing tools so that when you make a change on your Airbnb listing, those are automatically populated in your dashboard so you don't have to like log anything. Um, and then we track the performance before and after so that you can get an idea of what the, the dollar impact of your changes are, are on your listing. Do you wanna, do you wanna screen share and just kind of go into, you know, those, those four parts of the funnel and, and, and show like what, you know, how we would use the data and how it would help us understand like what w what we have to change. That yeah, absolutely. Um, so I'll open up IntelliHost here and I'll try to try to talk through it the best I can for those that are just listening. Um, but this is the dashboard that uh, most people see when they log in. Um, this property is actually a, a live property that we have in Destin. Um, and I'd love to maybe break it down for you just to see kind of how we use this to optimize our own properties. Um, 
So yeah, that'd be property great. up here. And sorry, sorry, Jeff. Uh, and for the people that are listening, if you're uh, if you can uh, switch to YouTube, then you'll be able to actually see the dashboard here. So you'll be able to really see like what we're what we're talking about. But we'll we'll do our best to uh, you know to make it useful for people that are just listening as well. Yeah. So um, the first thing we do is is show you your revenue. Uh, we pull that for the last twelve months and compare it to your competition. Um, right now in the dashboard, we have the last thirty days selected. And we can see that our our revenue is is low compared to the competition. Our, our Airbnb revenue was twenty two hundred dollars for this thirty day period, uh, and our competition was more, more like sixty six hundred dollars. So I'm being a little bit vulnerable and saying that we're we're not perfect. We we messed up on this one, um, but I'm going to show you why, and that's really the important part and what we did to fix it. Um, but uh, the next step that we're showing people is the impressions. Um, we can see that we're we're getting quite a few impressions on this one. Um, and then um, really what I want to show you is the first page impressions. Um, you can see that we have about 7,000 first page impressions and our competition is only getting 1,500. So we're, for this 30 day time period, so we are absolutely killing the competition and you can see this trend. Um, if I open it up, you can see how, that, how it trends out. Um, but we have way more impressions than our comp first page impressions than our competition. So we're ranking really, really well. But the problem comes when we get down to step three. You can see that our click rate is only about 12% historically, where our competition is at 45%, which is obviously a big issue. So this is really what kind of rose the red flag for us. And as we dove into this one, um, what we found was that our cover of photo was really bland. So when I went on to Airbnb and just kind of tried to see what, what it looked like on first page compared to everyone else, Everyone else had these like really dynamic cover photos where they had split screens and they had text and they had all these things that really made it pop. And ours was just a photo of the living room and that was it. And now we thought that was pretty special because we just renovated the place and it was nice, um, but it wasn't enough. So if you look here, what we did, this is our, this, we're gonna trend this chart out. So last Friday, we made a change to our cover photo and we made it more dynamic. I don't know for those that you can see, but the background is like this resort pool, it's beautiful. And then we have a couple of kind of embedded pictures right in that same cover photo um, that we just made in like a PowerPoint or like a Photoshop. Um, so that kind of shows the interior of the place so that people can kind of get a, a good snapshot. Um, and when we did that, we did that last Friday and you can see our click rate was averaging about 27% before um, this time period or even lower. I think, like I said, it was like 12%. Um, and then after we changed that picture, you can see our click rate jumped up to like 65%, um, 62%. So massive um, increase in click volume. And, and that's really what happened is our funnel was clogged. We had tons of first page impressions, but because our click rate was so low, that whole, we weren't getting any bookings because there's only so many people that were clicking on that listing. So um, it's just an example of how breaking down your funnel can help you diagnose the issue and fix it. Um, and that has, has started to bring in the bookings for this property. So, um, and then finally, you can see the last step here. Um, once we get people on our page, we book them just fine. You can see that we're getting a 0.44% of those that click on our listing actually book it. Our competition is at 0.27%. And so we're, we're converting at twice the rate that our competition is. But because we had a clogged funnel at click rate, um, only those number of clicks were actually funneling through, which was lowering our, our total bookings. So a really interesting um, way that, that uh, we've been able to break it down and, and, and diagnose the issue and solve the problem. Yeah, what's so amazing about this, th having this data is now we can literally, we can pinpoint like where is the issue, right? Versus mm -hmm. just looking at, you know, when you're just looking at views or you're looking at conversion rate, it doesn't tell the entire story. Um, and so it's very hard to understand like what do we need to change, right? And, um, and also it's hard to track it, right? So I, I love how this data shows us compared to the competition so you can easily see like all right well we're we're good in these three categories but we're we're not doing good in this category right one question right. on the um click to book rate um is that uh are those actually 
there those are people that just click on the reserve button or are those actual bookings these are actual bookings and we're actually taking okay. number of nights booked so this is looking at um so this calculation here is number of nights booked in the last 30 days compared to how many clicks we got in the last 30 days got it okay yeah that makes sense so they're actually they're actually nights booked right um mm -hmm. Yeah, so like, you know, going back to what we were talking about before, right? Um, do, you, do you have other examples of listings where maybe like an, a different, uh, instead of the click rate, maybe the click to book rate was the problem or the first page impressions was the problem? And like, do you have any more examples yeah. of that? Yeah, let me, let me um, show you a different property. Um, I can go to, we had one that's having a top of funnel issue. I think this is Wolf Charles Lodge. Uh, let's see, this one's actually having a click rate issue as well. We, we, we just refreshed this this property, so it's actually not showing um, the same issue anymore. But let me think of a different one. Most of our properties have, um, let's see, a really high first page impression because of some of the pricing strategies that we use, and we can dive into that if you'd like. Um, I'm trying to find one that has a, a, like more of a top of funnel issue or maybe a conversion issue. Um, let's look at... Maybe this one. Nope. Let's see. Apologize. Let's see if this one's. We're testing some of the subscription options. So it, there we go. Um, here we go. So this one is an interesting listing because it's a combined listing. For those of you that may nest your listings, meaning you have like three smaller listings that you kind of combine into one, um, you'll you'll find issues with these because they tend to be bigger properties and they get they appear in search a lot because you have tons of bedrooms. Um, but maybe you don't have quite as many um, clicks on those because they're really high priced. And that's what we've seen on this one is it's, it's kind of unusual. The price is really high. First page impressions are low. You can see we're getting beat by the competition pretty badly on this. And the other thing is there's not many properties like this one. This is actually a 15 bedroom behemoth because it's three five bedroom properties combined. Um, but uh, if I were diagnosing this one, I would start, and, and it's always best to start at the top of the funnel, um, mm -hmm. because you know you can. It doesn't matter your 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 the step you're working on is only as good as the step above it. So you start with your impressions, which in this one is actually quite low. Um, Twenty three hundred for thirty days is pretty pretty low, um, and then our first page impressions you can see nine hundred and eighty eight compared to the two thousand uh, for competition is is really getting getting destroyed. So. Um, what I would want to do here is see how we can can make this property a little bit more relevant um, by you know working on those filters and and uh, making sure those dates are available and that's another thing is this is a classic example of what happens when you block too many dates um, the three separate listings that we have for this one um, get booked a lot so the individual listings are booked and that blocks the combined listing and so because there's a lot of blocked dates for this property it's not getting a ton of views because it's just not appearing in searches. Um, people are searching for specific dates and it's not appearing there. And so that's that's really what this is visualizing for us is that that top of funnel is broken. Um, and if we want to get it booked, we're going to have to free up more nights. That makes right. sense. Yeah. So when it's when it's when it's the impressions that the problem is, if that's the problem, then we really have to revisit like, uh, you know, our minimum night stay and uh, all of our filters like are we showing up yep. uh, do we have too many dates uh, blocked and we have to look into like the Airbnb ranking search algorithm ranking factors which we actually did a podcast on that last week uh, with the top 13 ranking factors um, so if that's uh, if, if you missed that episode uh, highly recommend listening to that but yeah so the you know the the and I I think you made a good point there too where it's like if if you don't get a lot of impressions then you know, you could have like a really good click click to book rate, right? Or click through rate, mm -hmm. but it doesn't really matter if no one, you know, if only very few people see you. Um, right. So it makes sense to kind of start at the top of the funnel and, and, and make sure you get enough impressions first before you start optimizing the rest. Does that exactly. make sense? Awesome. Exactly. What, are, what are some other, what are some other things? Cause I know there, there's a lot of, there's a lot of, options that you have here on, on your tool what are some other things that we can use this for 
Yeah, so um, if you need a checklist of items to work on, uh, if you don't know where to start with your impressions or your first page impressions, we do provide a list of those recommendations uh, in the recommendations tab. Now right now, this is, these are generic recommendations that anyone can look through and use, and eventually these will be custom, so you'll be able to look in and see specific recommendations for your listing, uh, and that's, that's something we're developing currently. Um, and then w once you've made some changes and you want to see uh, how those changes are impacting your listing, um, you can go in here on the change tracker. And the change tracker is super helpful um, to understand what impact uh, the changes are having on your listing. So if I click into the change tracker, um, I see a list of my properties here, and I can see some specific changes that I've made. Again, these are changes that we pull in for you automatically. You don't have to log these. Um, and I can just open this one up for an example. Um, this is just some beta data that we have here. But this is the change date, or the date that we um, made the change, and then the um, what we changed. So this is a check-in change, or the, the text that shows up for the guest when, we, when they look at the check-in process. Um, you can see the text that it was before and after. Um, and then over here on the right, you're, we're estimating the impact of this change. Um, and we're doing that. Um, the main three are your first page impression rate, your click rate, and your book rate. Obviously, impressions can be, you know, can be affected by seasonality. Um, so I think impressions needs to be taken with a little bit of a grain of salt. But we can see in this particular change um, what the chart looked like before the change and after. And the average impression rate actually did go up a little bit here. Click rate didn't; really, it was basically flat. Um, but then we're comparing uh, the percentage change to your last 12 months of revenue to help you. Um, uh, estimate the, the dollar impact of this change and if it was a net positive or net negative. So um, that's what Change Tracker is meant to do. And then I'll just jump over. Any questions on Change Tracker? And I'll just show you one more thing. Um, no, I just I just thought it was really cool that you can, first of all, that it um, automatically pulls in the change that you're making, right? Um, and then number two is that you uh, can see how it impacts a different uh, the different uh, stages of the funnel and then also how it expresses it in the dollar amount right so you know exactly like how much it's impacting exactly that's all that's the idea um, the last uh, feature that that is in the tool I think will help people diagnose their pricing uh, especially last minute pricing so uh, if you're like us you've probably had a lot of weekdays go empty um, and a lot of weekends booked and maybe you even miss a weekend or here or there, um, but this tool is meant to um, fix that issue. And what it, what it does is it shows you how much traffic you're getting for future trip dates. So for example, I just picked this property, Le Chateau. Um, we're looking at from today going forward and how much traffic I've received on future days. So now I can identify, you can see right here, the days of March 5th, through maybe, I'm sorry, May 5th through May 10th are seeing less traffic than the rest of the days in, over the next 90 days. And so what I can do now is I can go into my price labs or whatever price tool, pricing tool I'm using and drop those five days down maybe 20, 30% um, to increase my chances of being booked. Because I can tell right now that if I don't do something about those days, I'm not gonna get booked. And um, to, to get an idea if this is, I get this question a lot from people is, is it just me or is it, or is it the whole market, right? You've probably asked yourself that question before is, what's driving this booking? Is it the market or is it just me? And this kind of answers that for you. So I'm actually opening up competitive clicks now for future trip dates. And I can see that the competition for these dates, they're not getting much either. So really, um, pricing change may not have as big of an impact for these specific dates um, because there's just not a lot of traffic happening on those dates. So that's kind of kind of gives you an idea of um, how much traffic am I getting for future dates compared to the competition and then making surgical pricing adjustments um, that you need based on that so that you can really fill those gaps proactively um, and not be looking at empty gaps in the past. So that's what that's for. Awesome. Yeah, I love I love that feature. <clears throat> and by the way, if you're watching on YouTube, uh, you might notice my, my camera has died. Uh, so I'm, I'm behind the, the black screen here now. Um, but um, 
yeah, this is uh, this is so cool. Um, is there anything else you wanted to share uh, about IntelliJ Host? Anything that we should know? No, I mean, uh, it's this is a tool that w w that was built by property manager for property managers, and um, we're we're always developing it. We we want to make it the product that people need and, and want. Um, so we welcome feedback. Um, I will mention that we're pulling all of this data directly from your Airbnb dashboard. So it's important to know that we're not scraping data to, and guessing on any of this. This is literally straight from the source. Um, so it's all accurate. Um, and as part of that, you know, we, in order to add IntelliHost uh, to, you know, to get, to get this data, you do add IntelliHost to your team. So you have to enable professional hosting tools um, and then you add us to a, your, your team on your Airbnb dashboard. And that allows us to then go and collect your data and to surface that. Um, so uh, it's worth mentioning that um, you know we never uh, we wouldn't we know we don't have anything but read only um, uh, code built into that. So we can't like manage your listings or do anything like that. Um, we actually just collect data, surface it for you on this dashboard, and um, all credentials are 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 uh, encrypted with with top level encryption so it's, it's safe um and there's uh um you know a lot of a lot of things that you can do with this tool and then finally um i think it's it's helpful to note some people as they try to add uh, intellihost or might run into an issue if they are a co-host uh on someone else's account so um currently airbnb has a policy where if you are a co-host on someone else's account you cannot add a team which is a really silly policy, and we've been asking people to submit feedback to Airbnb to change that. Um, but if you are a co-host on someone else's account, you wouldn't be able to create a team and add us to your personal account. Um, but we, but the owner of the account you manage could add us, and you could have all of your properties here in one dashboard. So just want to get in front of that. If anybody runs into that issue, um, that is a Airbnb policy thing. Awesome. Um well, I'm sure there's a, a lot of people who are interested in uh, checking this out. Uh, and again, I, you know, I see a lot of tools and 90% of the time I'm like, okay, yes, this is cool, but there's already like 10 other tools that do the same thing. Um, but this is something new. This is really, I haven't seen anything like this. Um, so, so I, <clears throat> I'm super impressed. Um, so for the people who are interested in checking it out, um, I know you have special offer, of course, for the listeners. So, uh, yeah, tell people how they can uh, how they can get access. Yeah, so you can go to intellihost.co forward slash pad, and uh, you, well, I think we're going to put that link in the show notes. But um, it's intellihost.co forward slash pad, uh, and that will get you uh, to the to the link, and then that will give you a thirty. I'm sorry, a thirty day free trial. You can go in and, and you know see the value of it for yourself, and then after that, you can use the offer code PAD to get twenty percent off uh, your subscription. Awesome! And what's the um, what's the pricing on the tool? Like we, everyone's can can check it out for free uh, for thirty days, um, and then if people want do want to sign up, what's the pricing on the on the tool? Yeah, so it depends on how many properties you have. Um, so we have some pretty aggressive bulk discounts. Um, but the first property, if you only have one, it's twenty four ninety nine per month. Um, after that, uh, for your second to your fifth properties, it drops to eighteen ninety nine, and then from like your six to your six through fifteen properties, it drops down to I think eight ninety nine. Um, so it's it's a tiered structure, uh, and you get uh, significant discounts for having uh, more properties. Awesome, awesome. Um, Okay, so the link is uh, IntelliHost. So let me just spell that: I N T E L L I H O S T. So Intelli, Intelligent Host. I guess is the abbreviation for Intelligent Host, right? Yep. Uh, .co, .co, so not .com, but .co slash pad, and then uh, you can get if you end up <coughs> actually signing up for uh, the paid version, you will be you get twenty percent off with code pad. All right, awesome. Well, Jeff, uh, appreciate you jumping on here. This has been uh, this has been really really awesome. Um, our our units are currently under renovation, so uh, I'm kind of bummed because I was <laughs> kind of dying to dive into it and, and check out all the the stats on our on our units. Um, 
but uh but yeah i'm excited once uh once we're up and running we're we're definitely gonna uh sign up and um yeah any any final thoughts for our listeners before we uh wrap this up no if you have any questions uh feel free to reach out you can find me at jeff at intellahost.co uh and you can email me there awesome thanks so much jeff and uh hope and thanks for uh, listening uh hope you guys enjoyed this episode i certainly did and uh again if you wanna <clears throat> if you wanna see what we were talking about and the uh, you know the 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 dashboard of the tool and everything else like uh, go check out the video on youtube you'll be able to see everything and with that said have a great week and we'll be back on friday so we'll see you soon